Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Midnight, Legacy of Darkness. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this setting for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, where evil rules supreme and being good is considered a sin, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the Orcs. The other Endor, or Orcs, as most peoples of Eredain call them, were shaped by the malign will of Isrador. Those colors only suspected, and every dwarf would savagely deny it, the orcs and the dwarves share a common elder fey lineage. The orcs could be considered a mutation. These are dwarves that were influenced by the evil of Isrador. They were living too close to his base of operations. Orcs are huge beings sometimes twice the size of their dwarf ancestors, and bigger even than the Dorns. They are heavily muscled, with broad builds and powerful limbs. Their thick heights are tough and range from light flint gray to a deep slate. Their hair is tawny and mane-like, growing over their heads, along their spines and down their chests to their groins. In the lands of the far north, most of orc society has been shaped by the will of Isrador for thousands of years. Instead of communities or families, orcs live in violent warbands, known as legions, each ruled by the female priest leaders known as the Kurash Udarin, the mother wives of Isrador. Life in the legions is specifically designed to produce the most bloodthirsty killers for Isrador's armies. Once they've seen their tenth winter, Young orcs are taken into the ranks of one of their legion's many spears. Squads of roughly ten warriors, where through brutal discipline, they are beaten into some semblance of soldiers. Their cultivated aggression is barely held in check by the strength of their superiors, and infighting and even outright wars against other legions can consume much of a legion's strength. In conquered Erenland, Orcs have taken over human cities, turning large buildings into meeting halls, communal barracks, and storage depots. They feed and resupply from the tribute they demand of the subjugated peoples around them. Orc forces are garrisoned in cities throughout Erenland, and orc armies war with the elves in the west and the dwarves in the east. They are considered enemies of anyone who tries to be free. However, this is not always the case. Some orcs rebel against the lives they lead. Perhaps they harbor a powerful grudge against an orc captain or a legate, and that grudge leads them to abandon Isrador's service. Others may reject being one more disposable pawn in the shadow's armies and strike out for themselves. Some orcs see past a lifetime of vicious and merciless conditioning and choose to stand against cruelty and injustice. In many cases, these orcs have little choice but to obey their leaders or suffer the same fate as all those who resist Isrador's will. On some occasions, however, these orcs find themselves in a position to escape the army and to try to make a new life elsewhere. Orc warriors, whether servants of the shadow or hunted by their own kind, take great pride in their fighting prowess. Amongst the armies of Isrador, it is traditional to add a scarred mark on their arm for each foe they kill in battle. The arms of warlords are usually covered in such marks from hand to shoulder, and at least half the marks are for killing other orcs. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about heroic orcs, the orcs against the shadow. We are also going to talk about the orc traits. At first glance, orcs seem quite stereotypical when it comes to fantasy settings, but this is the only setting that I know of where the orcs are so closely related to dwarves, mutated by the shadow itself, but there is a chance of actually finding orcs that serve higher ideals. And of course, we'll be talking about that in the next part. Thank you for watching this part of the review, and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below.
once again, thank you, and see you later.